Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. This is Life Today TV. I'm here with author, speaker, Steve Arterburn. You've probably heard of him if you've been around the Christian world for very long. He sold, what are you, in the millions now of books? About eight million. Eight mi <laughs> That is awesome. Yeah. Why do people buy your books? Why do you think? Uh, I think because uh, every problem I've ever had, I, I write about it and uh, I try to You've learn. You've had eight million. Yeah, eight million problems. <laughs> But, you know, I try to learn something and try to look for the Lord and uh, look for the lesson and look for the laughter. It's just kind of a little theme of mine. And uh, I hope that they, um, they buy the books because it's about a subject that they, they relate to and it's providing real hope. You know, a lot of people, uh, they tell you what you ought to do, but they don't tell you how to do it. And, um, or they tell you, make you believe it's a quick fix or instant solution and it's easy. And um, I, don't, I don't notice anything being easy in this world. Most people, especially Christians, um, I think there's a natural tendency to want to kind of cover up your bad sure. your struggles, the, the yeah. difficult things you've been through, the bad things you've done. But you've, you've kind of been willing to lay it all out there, and, and you're seeing that it actually helps people. What does that say about our transparency and the need for it? Well, I wish more people would be open because it's a great way to live. You never have to worry about somebody coming up and saying, hey, didn't you? And I, I, yeah, I wrote about that. And, <laughs> um, but, you know, I was just, uh, I was in um, California and a woman came up to me and said, uh, I read your book, Healing is a Choice. And uh, it just spoke to me because I knew reading it, somebody else had been through what I was going through and they made it out the other side. And, and I think that, a lot of times it's hard for people to relate to people in ministry if they think that they have to put on something, some kind of facade. Uh, I, I find in the Christian community a tremendous amount of shame and a tremendous amount of, of uh, judgment. And in the Christian community, shame actually kind of becomes humiliation because you not only feel bad about yourself, but you think the other people know something you don't or they're better than you. But, you know, my experience is that everybody has something. Everybody's struggling with something, whether they admit that they are or not. And uh, your, your dad and I were talking about uh, gluttony, and it's, it's just absolutely amazing that um, a person with a large weight problem can preach and, and never yeah. say what yeah. everybody's thinking, yeah. hey, there's a part of my life yeah. that is not in control. Absolutely. I've always had a problem listening to a really heavy preacher because I'm going, yeah. wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, well, the Bible says that we need to be in control of ourselves. Yeah. It's a, a, one of the fruits of the spirit is self-control. So. And so uh, if, if you haven't conquered it, at least tell people you struggle with it yeah. versus never bring it up and yeah. you just act like it's not there. Here's the thing. When you act like a problem uh, isn't there and just hope no one will notice or go away. It doesn't go away. You go away yeah. because you got to become a fake person that doesn't really deal with reality. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You mentioned something here. I want to, I want to, we didn't discuss this. I didn't prep you for this. Uh, I want to see your response. The fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience. Okay. Those are all things that, that come out when we are under the control of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then that last one, self-control. Mm -hmm. Which is it? Holy Spirit control or self-control? Well, hopefully it's, it's your life being led by, motivated by, and infused with the Holy Spirit so much that you have a power to control yourself. Uh -huh. and, and what does that mean, controlling yourself? It means being able to make a, a non-impulsive choice, uh, being able to go from wanting to feel good to wanting to feel good about yourself. And a lot of people, they just want to feel good right now. They want to fix it. They, they want a, uh, a drug or whatever. But when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you're motivated that I want to feel good about me because I want to stand before God and I want to be able to say, hey, I, I had it tough, but I did the best I could. And he says, well done. And I think that comes from a fruit of the spirit that you're able to be in that kind of control. Otherwise you become impulsive, compulsive and uh, obsessive over so many things. Yeah. I, I think it was purposeful that he put it last because yeah. I do see 
Interesting point. A lot of, and here's, here's what the spirit will do. But you know what, in the end, you've got to have a little self-control. Right. Right, right. Well, a lot of times we're waiting for God to do what God's waiting you know, for, for us, us to do. do. And right. then when God doesn't do it, we blame God right. for not doing it. Right. And he's sitting he's there. Going, it's in your hey, power to do on. it. Just have a little self-control. That's right. 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 Anyway, um, a sidebar, a fun one though. In all the books you've written and all the, the honesty that you've poured out and, and related to people, what do you think has related the most? Well, uh, I think the, the book that has affected more lives is Every Man's Battle. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I started out that book. I wrote uh, the first chapter there where I explained I was um, in a new car that I bought. It was actually a used Mercedes. I'd never owned a Mercedes before, and I was in California. And there was a girl jogging along the sidewalk in a bikini. And uh, I, was in, I was in stop and go traffic and I, you know, I craned to look at her going by so much that I, I could have ripped my neck out. And um, as I was looking that way, the car in front of me stopped <laughs> and I wrecked that car, had it about two days. And so, you know, trying to figure out how I was going to convince my wife that I um, swerved out of the way to miss that puppy. Yeah, right, you know? right. But it was, you know, it was just, I w I'm grateful. There was a consequence to that lustful behavior mm -hmm. to where I, I had to ask myself, who are you going to be? Mm -hmm. uh, but that began that book, and, um, you know, we've, we've had 11,000 men go through our Every Man's Battle workshop. Uh, we, we hear people talking all the time about groups in their church, Every Man's Battle group. A lady here in the audience said their church is just starting an Every Man's Battle group. So that one's probably had the, the biggest impact. It had some impact on, on my life. I had to explain to my wife, you know, when he says every man's battle, he doesn't really mean every man. <laughs> it's almost it's, every man's it's just battle. It's just a title. It's, it's of a euphemism. A book. But. but I do think that. Um, she didn't. Buy every, it. Yeah, every man has to make a decision about his integrity. And uh, the area of sex is one of the biggest areas that we get sidetracked. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If somebody wants to check out your books, see what you're up to, um, look at your new book on marriage. Newlife.com. Yeah. They can find the seven-minute marriage solution and the seven-minute marriage uh, devotional Bible. Right That's got to be a teaser because you can't fix your marriage in seven minutes. Well, if you sit down and you read God's Word together and have a little time eyeball to eyeball and pray together, uh, it just takes seven minutes a day. If you do that four out of seven days, it will change your character, change the decisions you make. It will lower the percentage of divorce by 60%. It'll lower the, the percentage of, that you'll use pornography by 59%. It is powerful. God's Word makes a difference. Intriguing. You'll yeah. we'll have to check it out. Do check it out. Check out his website and join Steve when he joins my parents on Life Today. Uh, you can see that at lifetoday.org. Thanks for sitting down with me. Thank you.